Welcome to Crema Media TV. I'm Reggie Sikakani, and joining me in studio is Transnet Ports Terminal CEO, Carl Sotligwa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Reggie. How does Transnet Port Terminals feature in this 300 billion rand infrastructure program? And what are the main objectives of these TPT investments that will see South Africa's ports becoming more efficient? Well, obviously, TPT or Transnet Port Terminals is part of uh, uh, Transnet. Yes. Uh, the 300 billion plus uh, capital investment program, which has recently been unveiled by our Group Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Brian Malife, encompasses uh, a seven-year capital investment plan, which covers all of the, uh, the various Transnet uh, divisions. TPT itself, uh, of that uh, 300 billion rand investment, will be investing uh, just uh, over 10 percent of that, 33 billion rand, uh, at all our various port terminals. And this is going to go towards developing a, uh, an infrastructure base at our ports, which uh, uh, is aimed at making South Africa and the South African economy much more competitive relative to other economies, and also enabling South Africa to push uh, its, uh, its growth and development uh, program uh, via exports and imports, which uh, we handle via our, our, our terminals and our ports. What are some of the challenges that TPT faces? as it attempts to implement these measures that will improve uh, port operations? The big challenge, obviously, is, is, is that we currently have, in various areas of uh, our business, aging equipment, where over the years, for a variety of reasons, we haven't invested at the, at the level and at the rate, uh, ideally, that we should have been. We also uh, need to uh, look at the issue of uh, skills, skills development of our people. And, uh, and also investing in, in newer technology uh, and newer ways of, uh, of doing things. And really building the relationship that we have with our customers. You know, you speak about a 300 billion rand capital investment uh, uh, program. It's actually referred to as a market demand strategy. And uh, that is because it is designed to meet whatever unmet demand is out there in the marketplace. So we uh, are engaging very closely with our customers to uh, ascertain from them what it is that they're projecting and they're forecasting in terms of uh, a movement of goods into and out of the country. And, and also then putting together a plan and a program which will enable us to be able to develop the infrastructure, to develop our people, to develop the business such that uh, we're able to, to support uh, that demand uh, in the marketplace. From some of the research work that we've done, we, uh, we've managed to ascertain that there's in excess of 50 million tons per annum unmet demand in the marketplace. So our plan is to make sure that we catch up uh, in terms of the infrastructure development that needs to take place for us to be able to meet that demand and we're able to, uh, uh, to also develop infrastructure and capacity ahead of the demand and in that way bolstering the uh, competitiveness of, uh, uh, of the country and creating jobs, mm -hmm. uh, much needed jobs uh, uh, for the economy as well. So we're very excited and very bullish about uh, uh, the strategy. Mm -hmm. Can you just kindly provide an overview of the possible tr uh, job creation uh, that may take place as a result of mm. uh, the infrastructure rollout? Yeah. Well, just at transit port terminals alone, currently we have about 6,300 uh, people employed at, uh, at TPT. At the end of the seven-year program, uh, an additional 2,000 uh, uh, plus jobs will be created only at uh, uh, transit port terminals. And, uh, and that's if you know this program uh, we continue uh, uh, with it uh, on an annual basis, but over the seven-year plan, uh, that's the, those are the direct jobs that uh, we anticipate should be created within uh, transit port terminals. Not to mention the indirect uh, uh, jobs through you know, the industries and, and customers that we interact with and re-engage with that will also benefit from uh, uh, this aggressive investment drive that, uh, that we're having in the business. And also the development of the skills that of necessity must come with that. You know, in investing in newer infrastructure, in new technology, we have to make sure that the people that we have, uh, the people that operate these pieces of equipment, have the, uh, the, the requisite level of skill uh, to be able to, op to operate them optimally so that we get the best uh, 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 out of uh, uh, that equipment. So there's, there's going to be a lot of focus in, uh, in developing the skills of our people uh, as, as part and parcel of that. So, you know, to your question, what is the challenge? Challenge is, uh, building the infrastructure that uh, it gets up to the level that it, it needs to be at for us to be able to meet the, the demand, uh, creating the jobs and continuing to, uh, to ensure that we track and monitor that jobs are being created and that the, you know, the, the, the level of skills 
of people operating in those jobs is, uh, uh, is also paid attention to. And in that way, I think we'll be able to, uh, to make a, a meaningful impact yeah. on the economy. Yeah. Um, as mining exporters have often complained of uh, logistical uh, bottlenecks, uh, what strategies are being discussed that will see mining logistics being ramped up? Well, you know, we, uh, the mining industry is, is a major customer of ours. Yes. Um, you know, we operate the bulk terminals, for example, mm -hmm. through Richards Bay, where we import and export a lot of bulk commodities. Saldana, where we export um, uh, iron ore, uh, Port Elizabeth exporting manganese, and um, uh, hence providing uh, support uh, for, uh, uh, for the mining uh, industry and mining companies. We are and continue to work very closely with them. In, uh, in forecasting the level of demand that is there in the marketplace to the markets that, uh, that they themselves uh, export to or export from. And uh, in working together with them, we, uh, we, we make sure that, that we, we synchronize our own plans, our own investment plans, together with their ramp up plans in terms of uh, production and the like. So that, you know, uh, at any given time, they are not producing and we're not able to meet the demand or that we're investing too fast for, that, for them in terms of their production uh, schedule. So, they, you know, in the past, this has not always worked uh, perfectly. Uh, and through the engagements and interaction that we continue uh, to have with them, uh, which are very good engagements uh, uh, that we have with, uh, with the mining companies, this is an area that we're now uh, specifically addressing because everyone wins at the end of the day. You know, they get the capacity that, that's required and we're also able then to track the production uh, coming from their side for them to be able to meet uh, a demand in markets like China, India and the, and, and, and the like that they export to. To what extent is the private sector involved in this major, uh, major national uh, development? <coughs> Look, it's, this is a, a very bold and aggressive uh, plan mm. that uh, um, has been put in place. It is necessary for, uh, for the country. Certainly as, as, a, as a freight logistics operator like ourselves, Transnet, we believe it's necessary that uh, this level of investment is, uh, is pursued. Certainly Transnet cannot do it on its own. We have to work very closely with the, uh, with the private sector in, uh, in making sure that, first of all, on their side, insofar as they are a customer of ours, that the production is, uh, is taking place and, and, and we're able to support that. But I think also we are looking more and more at uh, uh, opportunities where we can uh, uh, cooperate uh, together with the private sector in addressing some of these investment challenges as well. Um, I think Transnet has uh, uh, admitted to the fact that uh, you know, for, for a level of investment that we're talking about in excess, in, in excess of 300 billion rand over the seven years, um, Transnet on its own uh, simply cannot do it. And Transnet will need to, uh, uh, to work hand in glove with uh, a number of other players out there, private sector, together with government and, and, and the like in making sure that, uh, uh, you know, everyone comes to the party in mm. making this happen. Mm. And um, the uh, Africa Rail and Ports and Harbors uh, Conference. conferences are, is coming up mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of June. Yeah. Uh, what uh, key message are you looking to deliver there at the event? Well, this is, it's in its ninth year now, and uh, we, we, you know, at this time of the year, we get very excited at Transnet mm -hmm. because I think uh, uh, this platform that's been created through the uh, Africa Rail and Harbors uh, uh, Conference really mm -hmm. is, is an opportunity where the various players uh, uh, on the continent come together mm -hmm. to discuss uh, 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 issues yes. pertaining to, uh, to the uh, ports, harbors, and rail uh, uh, industry. Uh, how do we address whatever gaps might be there in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so it's, it's a unique opportunity where all of uh, uh, the key players mm -hmm. uh, in the industry come together uh, to discuss issues of investment, issues in terms of addressing skills, uh, gaps and the like. How do we work closer and better with uh, uh, with our customers in bolstering the uh, the uh, ports, harbors, and rail uh, infrastructure and capacity on the continent? So uh, we're very excited about it, and um, uh, Transnet and, and Transnet Port Terminals is going to be featuring quite prominently. We have a number of speakers that uh, uh, will be speaking there. I think on the first day we're also hosting a breakfast session uh, where we'll uh, just be addressing a number of questions from uh, uh, various players there. And, uh, and you know, we, we do invite people to, uh, uh, to come along and, and, and interact and engage as much as is practically possible. Because I think it's, it's through that sort of uh, interaction, engagement, and, and sharing of ideas that we can only improve uh, uh, in the sector. Well, it sounds promising. Mr. Sotlego, thank you very much for joining us.